You're listening to a Rare Drop podcast. Check us out at raredrop.co. Welcome to the worst. Ra- I mean, old fashioned. <laughs> I mean, episode who the fuck knows. It's been a while, man. It I think you, got, you guys have done like what? Two, three episodes at me? Maybe two at or least three, two. man. It's been tough. I'm, well, I, A, the holiday slows everything down, period. Yep. Period. Right. Yep. And then on top of that, it's it. Yeah. With everybody's work schedules being just. Crazy, absolutely crazy. It's tough yeah. to, to sit down and kind of, you know, nail out. Well, and everyone's got and, and I mean, you still got a lot going on on your side, man. You know, new uh, house, new baby. Yeah. My, my the baby's doing great. My son started wrestling, so he's got wrestling twice a week now. Right on. Um. Oh, yeah, man. He loves it. Loves it. So it's just it's. He'll end one sport and go right into another, which I love because he gets to experience. The goal for us was let's experience a lot while it's relatively inexpensive, right? Because like kids sports, they don't generally get full gear, right? Right, right. They don't like the meets are kind of what it's like, whatever. So experience as much as you can while it's, <clears throat> relatively inexpensive and it's not balls to the wall competitive. Absolutely. We did Decide. the same thing with my son. Yeah. He did the city, whatever the city was doing. So it'd be like basketball, baseball, basketball, football. Yeah, like, like basketball is always twice a year, which is probably why he fell in love with basketball. That's the sport he decided to stick with. Right. Uh, but like, yeah, when he was le- that age, he was, yeah, we just play like year round, whatever we, sport the city was doing. You figure out what it is you like. Exactly. Whatever, you know, you pick out your seasons, right? And and you go from there, and it'll help us narrow down versus, I mean, like when I was younger, I, I football, and I really didn't mm-hmm. discover lacrosse and wrestling till, well, wrestle, uh, lacrosse I discovered. Oh shoot, middle school, I guess. That but makes it was, sense. It was all, I mean, man, from like fifty pound pop Warner leagues, football, football was life. Yeah. And, it's all I did. And then lacrosse kind of changed the game. And then like every high school wrestling team, they just kind of like peruse the halls for people that they think match a match a weight class. And right. They right. Snipe you. They're like, we need you. And they drag <laughs> you into the cult. And uh, that's it. You're a wrestler for the rest of your life. Yeah. Bryce is all in on basketball. And I thought we, we were kind of curious after, um, after COVID and like everything was shut down, his school just stopped, stopped doing sports period in, in, in middle school. So he like missed a, uh, like a year and a half of sports and um, his club shut down or it's, the coach moved. So he, cl- he took the club with him, you know, to a, for the part, part of town. So we lost the club. And so he was like, I'm kind of like good, not playing. And we're like, okay. And so he didn't play through middle school and then high school started. And he was like, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try for basketball. And I was like, you do you, man, whatever you want to do. Well, we support you. Yeah, absolutely. And just be, just be aware. You've taken off like a year and a half. You didn't, you didn't stick up with club and or find a new club and you weren't really going to the court and practicing. So just, you know, be aware. You're tall, but you, you don't have like this natural born talent that some kids have. And he started going to the after, um, like the after school gym stuff mm, and smart. met the coaches. And, smart. And yeah, he made the freshman team last year. He was a starter. And so JV, he made JV this year and he's, the season just started this last week and uh, so he he's just started the again. In. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he put the in. he put the work in and got he secured a, you know a, a starting position at, at least for the you know for for now. That's what you got to do. That's what you yep. got to do. Yeah, we, we've done. I mean, he's done everything from soccer, t ball, lacrosse, ice hot. Well, uh, skating not not quite ice hockey yet. He's done floor hockey, um, flag football, wrestling. I mean, the works. Mm-hmm. I, ironically, I think he. He hasn't done basketball yet, but hmm. everything else I think he's kind of dabbled in. I don't know that he necessarily has a favorite yet, but not yet. He'll yeah. see, he's six. We'll, we'll see what he likes. Oh, yeah. He's super young. Yeah, Absolutely. He's got a time in a row. He does love wrestling. That's awesome. And I forget, man, because these coaches are no joke. It's just a club, right? Local club yeah. league. Man, when the, the, the other day they were teaching the kids how to shoot and, um, you know, keep your head up. And every time these kids went in with their head down, dude, they would just bury their faces in the mat. Just boom, <laughs> head up, boom, head up. I was like, man, 
I miss how relentless Ruthless. this sport was. <laughs> I never did. I never did uh, wrestling, but I, because I was in uh, yearbook and like photography and video, I'd okay. go to the, I'd go to at least one or two meets every year just to capture some some stuff. So I got, I got to watch it. It was it's gnarly for sure. We we were the weird kid. Not I say weird. So you had you had like the football dudes that were that were you know the quintessential what you would picture jock type deal right right and then the wrestling guys were always just the strange like yo you don't fuck with those guys man yeah yeah you just you don't fuck with the wrestlers just leave just leave them guys be <laughs> well at that point it was like it was like you knew karate like it was it was a form of it, like you dude, know if you try to fight this guy he's gonna do some shit that you're not gonna be able to to, to you know uh, fight against <laughs> you know what's crazy even so <clears throat> in high school you always had smokers corner right because you couldn't, right yep couldn't smoke on school property but everybody smoked so you just the nearest corner bus stop is where we all smoked right so same thing for dip now if our coach caught us smoking bro there was hell to pay in practice hell to pay because that that would mess up your lung capacity, right? And that's, you get winded and he'd mm-hmm. be pissed. He would try telling us soda did the same thing. The carbonation in soda takes the oxygen level out of your <laughs> My running coach did the same yeah, bullshit, dude. Yeah, dude, yes. <laughs> so if you were caught drinking soda, man, forget it. And our eating habits were bad enough. Like I would have right. a piece of toast in the morning and a hard boiled egg for lunch. And that's all I would eat all day just to make weight. But, um, it was weird in our school. You had the smoker's corner rule. Our coach was not down with smoking, but man, if you dipped to him, that's like weight loss. You're, you're, you're cutting down your water weight. So, right. so dipping was okay. That was considered, uh. that was considered cool. So you'd see the wrestlers in class, man, in class, we'd have spitters oh. and we'd have, we'd have a lip in and we would just sit there and just, <laughs> All class, and none of the teachers bothered us. Wow. None of the teachers bothered us. That's crazy. Crazy, right? Yeah. Holy shit. Well, man, it's good to, it's good to be back on the pod with you and chatting. Um, yeah, thanks man. For, thanks for doing this on the weekend. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Absolutely. It's been, my schedule's, I, I don't have a schedule. I'll, put it, I'll, just, put, I'll just say that. I don't have it's a schedule. Constant work. Yeah. I feel yeah, that, I mean. Dude. Yeah, so uh, for those listening, in, in uh, back in September, end of December, end of September, I made the decision to kind of back off on my content creation and, and everything, and help my dad, and my brothers with a with a family business, and uh, they do produce delivery, so they they deliver to restaurants and and whatnot. So we have a warehouse, uh, you know, a couple of trucks, a couple of vans, and it's you know the the business starts at like three in the morning, and so like they have to place all their orders and put everything in. And then we, you know, pull the product, load the trucks, um, and then not by 9 a.m. they're out there delivering to the restaurant, so the restaurant kitchens get their stuff so they can prep for the, you know, for their day. And uh, my dad's been doing this for 30 years, and my brother's been working for him for 15, and then my youngest brother joined about two or three years ago. But we all took turns working for my dad at one point, mm-hmm. like I, back when I was senior high school, freshman college, mm-hmm. I delivered my dad on Saturdays. I sat, cause that was the one day I could, I could do, I had no school or anything. So Saturdays was my dad load the van up and go deliver like his, I think, I think at the time he had like three restaurants or four restaurants. Right. And, uh, now he's got oh, close to 60 and, uh, it's, it's a six day. It's, they deliver six days a week. So they work six days a week, but whoever's doing the ordering, which is me right now is seven days a week because oh. like, like tonight I have to put orders in for tomorrow. Right. So it's like, like, se- you know, se- seven days a week. Um, so anyway, it's, it's been crazy. I've been, I, I've been going down there at, at like five in the morning and, um, basically being an extra set of hands at first. But then once the trucks are loaded and gone by like, like nine, nine 30, I'm in the office with my dad trying to help with like more like the you know office type stuff. So like right away when I got in there, I got like, got him walkie talkies. I got him cordless phones. Cause he had like one wired phone and it was across the room. So anytime it rang, he had to get out of his desk. I'm like, uh-huh. cause his, de- his desk was in the doing? center of the <laughs> Yeah, well, his desk is in the center of the room, and you know there's no plugs, right? And he one time had the phone on his desk, and he tripped over the freaking cable, and ripped it out of the wall. Oh, so he's like, "Never again." And I'm like, "Well, that makes sense, but you know they make cordless phones, right?" <laughs> like, so I bought cordless <laughs> phones. I got him walkie talkies because he'd have to get off his desk and walk down the down the warehouse to where my brothers were loading to tell him something, or ask him a question, and then walk back. And I'm like, "Here's a walkie talkie. That now you don't have to do that. Here's the more efficient way to do things." Yep. Yep. 
And um, and then the, the biggest, biggest game changer was he's had the same cell phone number for 35 years. Wow. And everybody has that number. Friends, family, uh, all his customers, you know, everybody. So the phone would ring and go off 24 seven because it was always something. And his mom's actually uh, turning 90 today. We're going to we'll go visit her today. Um, and so he, could, you know, he'd never turn off his phone or put it on silent because like if the phone rang or, you know, his sister called, like, hey, mom's in the hospital or, you know, whatever. So it was just like anytime it rang or, or it dinged or anything, he'd have to look at it. And of course, if it was a customer saying something, he'd be like sucked into work immediately, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I got a him a new cell there. phone, new cell phone number. I said, here, this is your personal phone. You just give this to your family and friends. We'll keep this one as the work phone and I'll respond to your customers. And if anyone texts you or calls you looking for you as a friend, I'll give me your new number and we'll just kind of filter it that way. Mm. And so we've been doing that for about a month and a half or so. And he's definitely, he feels disconnected at times from the business because he's not knowing what's going on mm -hmm. um, with the ordering and everything like that. But he's like, oh my God, Clint, because I didn't realize how much like stress was caused by that phone. I go, I did. I was here for two weeks and saw how bad it was. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jeez, man. So that's been a big game changer for him. Um, and I got the, to the last thing I did was I created a new email address that was specific for orders. And I sent out yeah. letters with all the invoices last week, to all the customers and anyone that's been texting the phone for orders. Cause he would take an order. Like someone would just text the order to him directly. Oh, and then he just, you know, he put it in and I've been responding saying, Hey, you know, starting next week uh, or, you know, starting in December, we're moving all our orders to either call the office line or email it in. And it got, you got some guys that are like, you know, well, I can't text it. I'm like, well, you can text an email. Like if you want to just text to the email address, that's fine. I said, but email's email. Like it's the same thing. It's the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 We, we have a lot of, um, I mean, we're in Arizona. So a lot of Mexican food restaurants that we, that we uh, service. And obviously there, there, there's some uh, language barriers there. And so texting has been the easiest form for them, which my dad accepted that. So getting them over to an email, it's very daunting for them. Like, well, I don't have email or I don't know how to use email. It's like, I got you, man. I got, you know, so I've gone to a couple of customers and actually showed them how to do it. Yeah. Um, and it's you just trying trans. to get everything to <clears throat> one central location so that I can get my dad back his work phone and be like, cool. Now that's just customer service. If anyone's got problems or have questions, they can hit you up there, but all the orders are in the central location. Yeah. And now any of us can put orders in. It's not just one person that's stuck to doing ordering. Yeah, it's so, tough. Yep. That's tough, dude. I, we have a, my dad's got a family business. My brother, I think, is fourth generation. Oh, wow. One, one two, three. Yeah, yeah. My brother's fourth gen in the family business. And he's doing the same. You know, each generation, it progresses a little and a little. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, dude, I... I I feel your pain there, especially trying to bring it up to a more efficient, trying to grow it, trying to, you know what I mean? It's, and especially with your work hours, because I remember the same thing as a kid. That's, I mean, that's where you worked. Weekends, yeah. you worked. Summers, summer vacations, you you worked with dad. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like well, the, the biggest thing is the, the the hurdle that I'm, you know, we're trying to get over right now is the day-to-day -day operations are so jam-packed, um, just balls to the wall the whole time that, it's, it makes it very difficult to like come back after the deliveries to make changes. Like let's reorganize the, the cooler. Let's, uh, you know, uh, move some stuff around and, and, um, you know, categorize things, go through some, some of our product and say, you know, what do we need to uh, get rid of? Or, you know, we got a bunch of crap in the corner. It's like, well, let's go through it and figure out what we can sell or what we can get credit back for. You know, it's just money sitting there. Oh, that's fair. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the, the the problem is, like I said, you know, we're in by five, and uh, right now both my brothers have to deliver. Still, um, I hired two guys, but one quit after two weeks. Um, Why? It just just wasn't for him, you know, oh, because okay, okay. small yeah. company. My dad can't offer any benefits right now. Um, the the wages are, are are decent for like you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, but it's one of those things where he's the way he's always done things. Like I told him for straight up, like per the labor laws, like a manual labor blue collar position is supposed to be hourly. Like that's, that's the rules, right? Laws, whatever. What do you have? And he's always salary? on salary. Yeah. He always, he's always on salary because it's like you get those guys that milk the clock, right? This is a four yep. hour route and somehow magically it's taking you six or seven hours to do it. Yep. Right. Yep. And so my dad just said no more, no more hourly. This, you work. These are, these are the, you know, these are your days you work. When you get done, you get done, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get done early, cool, go home, right? No big deal. But there's gonna be some days you're going to work a little, little more. And that's kind of the ebb and flow. But when I started doing some research, I'm like, yeah, you can't you get, you come from the first of the year, dad, we got to switch the drivers to hourly, you know, unless they have some kind of manager position or you know, there's some rules there, some, mm -hmm. some, uh, some gray areas. 
but none of your guys, at least the guys I'm hiring, don't fit that bill. They are purely labor workers. They need to be hourly. So we need to be just have guidelines, right? We just have to like, hey, this is sure. a four hour route. You sure. should be back by this time, right? Give or take an hour for traffic and stuff. Yeah, that's efficiency yep. though. Again, exactly. You know, and and I said if they if it starts coming down to like they need more hours, there's definitely more work to be done. You know, mm-hmm. we can they can come back and and then now we can do stock the shelves and move some stuff around or whatnot. But um, anyway, so my brothers are both driving right now. So it's, so by the time they get done, they leave they leave by like nine nine thirty ten at the latest four or five hour route. They they have it set up where they typically just do their route and then go home with the van and then they'll come back the next day with the van, right? Okay. So, it works out for them and that in their favor. But with that being said, then they're just going straight home. They're not coming back to the warehouse to do more stuff mm-hmm. because a, they've already worked eight or nine hours for the day and B, they don't want to get stuck in traffic because they and, came back to the warehouse for two hours and now they're in net, now they're in traffic. Right. And it elongates so, their day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Not only are they working an extra hour or two because you know, yeah, we need to do some stuff, but now it's gonna take me an hour to get home instead of, mm-hmm. you know, 30 minutes. Um, yep. so things like that, just, they, they, again, they've been doing it for so long. They've, they've done it to themselves where they like, this is the best, most efficient way. And I'm like, well, that's it, cool and all, but you guys all say we need to make these changes. Well, when are we gonna make these changes? Like, mm-hmm. when are we gonna, you know, do these things? Um, how, how receptive is the family? Like your brother's been there 15 years mm-hmm. to, to you coming in and making these changes though. Pretty pretty amicable or oh yeah yeah no I'm, I'm, the whole time I've been basically going what do you want to do right mm-hmm. because the the long term plan is for my brother Austin to kind of take over my dad's role and yeah. take over the business at some point right like that's been that's always been the thing it's just been fifteen years of you know balls to the wall grinding my brother's getting worn out you know he's straight up he's like I'm forty next year I don't want to be driving a truck anymore I don't want to be doing the the Can't blame the, him. Yeah, the you know, I don't mind being on the dock and helping load and pick orders. Like he's he just knows things, you know, that even the new guy has been there for two months, he, which is awesome. He's a great guy. We just gave him a raise. We're like, we you know, Steve, you're doing great. Da da da. He's like, oh man, I'm here for the long haul, man. I'm a team player. Like you know, uh, I I love you guys. He he already got tried to get poached, man. Someone saw his, he was wearing my dad's shirt and the logo, and he's like, oh yeah, you work for so and so. He's like, you should come work for me, man. I got this, this, and this. And like, he's like, no, I'm good, man. These guys are like family. These guys treat me like family. I'm you know, I'm good. See. He came, yeah, he came he came back one day. He's like, Yeah, man, so and so from so and so said I should come work for him. And he started offering me like this and that. <laughs> We're like, no shit. I go, hey Pop, you need to give so and so a call. But like, get the fuck off, man. This is my guy. <laughs> Step off. Step yeah. off, hussy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh no, no, so he's a he's a good guy. We got one good guy. And um tomorrow I I have like four applications. I'm gonna call these guys and, and do a little phone screening and then try and get at least at least two in for face to face interviews and try nice. to get a driver hired this week. Cause like I said, when the, the second guy was on and his first week being like solo on his own, that was the first time my brother Austin didn't have to drive and was there at the warehouse and him and I actually got some shit done. And, um, yeah, we made some cool, some good improvements. And then even my youngest brother, who's still right now, a full-time driver, he had the shorter routes every day because we had two full guys doing the big routes. He so even he was, back and start. yeah. So like one time he, we did like, he didn't, he just didn't go out early. Like we, like, he like stayed behind mm-hmm. and, um, we ended up rearranging our cooler and um move some things around and now it's way more efficient things are like in better places and it's like that's a little like little checkbox little progress we need to do that like five more times you know yep, yep. but then the, like the next week the guy quit and so everyone was back to you know okay we'll get three 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 guys three routes sorry you know but yeah it's uh it's going good man it's just like like i said i went into it thinking you know, yeah, I'm going to be on hourly. I'm only just going to, I'm not going to work over 40 hours. I'm obviously not going to charge my dad overtime. So I'm just going to work my 40 hours and mm-hmm. this, this, and that. But just being down there made me realize how much, I mean, I don't I understand why my brothers are getting burned out. I wonder, I understand why my brothers are just like, you know, getting to their limits of They're like, I don't know how much go, longer go, I want. Go, 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 Yeah. And yeah. it's a physical labor job. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're the 50 pound sack of potatoes and, and onions, like it's right. heavy, you right? You. You're just constantly yep. their backs are always sore and I, now i feel it too it's like i'm i'm doing it so i'm like yeah fuck yeah, yeah my back's killing me you know yep yeah we we were doing uh <laughs> masonry it's all mm-hmm. so yeah i feel you <laughs> yeah i feel you it's tough man lifting shit but up. i gave him i gave him i gave him 90 days so we're two months in you know the, the end of the year is basically my, kind of when i originally told him i said i'll give you a hundred percent of me for three months I said, at the end of the year, we'll assess where we're at. And I even told my dad, I told my brothers too, I said, you know, if you guys aren't feeling after 60 days, like that last month, like maybe you, maybe you do need to talk to dad and like figure out like an exit strategy. You know, if you're not hundred percent to keep going, give, let him know. So he figures some stuff out. 
the reality is that my my one brother austin he's been doing it for so long and does such a good job that my dad would have to hire like two guys three guys to do the same thing my brother's doing at the level that he's doing it at and um because i know he also makes a decent wage he's been doing it so long that he, he makes almost as much as my dad does and they and they do think of it as a partnership um mm -hmm. and i've been trying to tell austin that too i'm like because he'll he'll be like i'll ask him something he's like oh find out what dad wants to do. I'm like, no, no, no. What do you want to do, man? Like what, what if I'm, I'm telling you, like dad's not here. You got to start that transition, man. Yeah. Because like, dad, you need to start thinking. Not gonna, yeah, dad's not going to be here forever. Well, so, and I tell him too, I said, you complain about what dad's decisions are. So like, what would you change? What would you do different? Implement you know, yourself. Like, Get exactly. In there. Get in there. And he has, he, uh, he, so he took over the, um, the inventory and the ordering for our product in the morning. Mm. And I took over the customer orders in the evenings. So we took away those two pieces from my dad. And um, so he's been like ordering the product. Well, my dad was like, well, again, old school, the way he used to do it was you would order five tomatoes, four avocados, three lettuce. My dad would order five, three, and four. And that's what we would get in. He would ship them out. And then the next day he's like, okay, I need four of these, two of these. And he'd order those. And so every day products coming in, my brothers have to rotate it and move it and, and shuck it. And and it's like, dad, just order every other day and just double up, right? Like bulk up. You have reports. You can see what you need, what you sold last week. You know roughly what people take. I mean, my dad knows this shit like with his eyes closed. He's like, so-and-so is going to take this much. So-and-so is going to take that much. If when I put an order know. in, yeah, I'll put an order in. Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, yeah, so-and-so actually gets a sliced mushroom, not a whole mushroom. I'm like, oh, he just said mushroom. He's like, yeah, it's cool. I know. You know, he corrects shit all the time because he knows what the customers want. And he's been doing it for so long. You start cataloging that shit now. I already built a spreadsheet. Yeah, okay. I you're said, already right, on it. Yep. Start cataloging that I, shit now. I built a spreadsheet and I put every one of our customers on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I even color coordinate them to east side, west side, and then the central. And I said, all right, Pop, start start with the start with the Mexican food restaurant. Give me your give me what tomatoes and avocados they take. And he wrote it all up and I just and I said, yep. Okay, let's you go with to. uh you have yep. to. Cause I go I go the same thing, Pop. I said, I don't know what you know. I just, you know, I just start. I'm the new guy, right? I'm, and I'm fast now. I, I can do you know QuickBooks pretty quickly. I can put orders in pretty quickly. But I make those little mistakes because customers are just like one this, one this, two of this, and they don't say Romas or five sixes or um, you know someone will say a bag of avocados. I'm like, well, how much is in a bag? Like we don't right. sell bags, What's a bag? right? It's, yeah, it's either piece or pound. So my dad's like, oh, when you say a bag, it's fifteen. I'm like, okay, like that's arbitrary, but okay, you yeah. know. So considering a dozen yeah. is 12 bakers is 13. You know what I mean? Yep, exactly. I guess, I guess the vegetable doesn't. <laughs> so I, the, the plan at the moment is, um, end of the year, I, I got to get back to streaming and, and, and my YouTube stuff. Um, I think I'll stick, I'll go down to like a part-time status and at the very, at the very least I'll keep the ordering and I'll just continue doing ordering for my house mm. and maybe go down to the warehouse like once a week just to check in. But, um, the biggest thing is get that second driver hired and get my brother Austin off the trucks and more in the warehouse and if I can do that this week, and then so like, so get someone hired this week and next week he's off the trucks, then the last three weeks of the month, him and I can really do some shit and get some things in set, set in place. Bang some stuff out. Yep. And then hopefully the second guy sticks around come the new year. Right. And then we can just continue moving on. So I, tough, I told man. him, I said, look, if I can, if I can come be here at my house three days a week, like weekdays, right? Like three days. And then, cause it, right. Like I said, they work through Saturday. So if, if I work, let's say I come in the warehouse Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I work from home. I can do my streams. I can do whatever. Then I, as long as I have a happy medium, because like originally my plan was eight hours and then I could come home at like one and still stream in the afternoon before dinner time. But I'm there till like three or four sometimes. And then immediately I'm like, oh, I got to start putting orders in because I know it's a busy day. I got 15, 20 orders put in. So right. I won't even, I won't do anything personal. I'll just right back to work and I'm working just, you know. So like, I don't mind doing the ordering if I don't have to be at the warehouse for 10 hours, right? If I'm at the warehouse for four or five hours and I've got in the middle of my day to get back to myself and then I, I spend a couple hours putting orders in or, you know, something like that. We just got to find a, a, a middle ground. I don't mind. I'm not cold turkey yet in January. Yeah. My dad thinks it's like I'm going to be gone in January. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not putting all this time and effort into it just to walk you. away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but everything else going good with you, man? Anything else yeah. new on the horizon? Yeah. No, <clears throat> everything's pretty decent, man. I can't. Uh, no complaints. You know, staying on the same grind. Yeah, same ground. house. Everything is moving in, settled in on the house. Yeah, at, my wife got most of the most of the houses painted. Uh, I think the next big project she wants her her closet like she bought all new closet organizational mm -hmm. furniture. Nice. So I have to build that. <laughs> I have to build that. But that I'm getting ready. Do list to, continues. 
Oh, dude, it never ends. It never ends. <laughs> I uh, getting ready to throw the the beamer up on the stands for the winter and just start ripping it apart. Yeah, ripping it apart. Got yeah, I got some. I got some new parts coming in that came in. I got some more stuff that I got to buy. I'm waiting. Wait for a little bit more cash flow after the holidays. Yeah, yeah, I feel that, man. I feel that. Actually, that's, been, that's been the one thing that's been nice is, is getting a little extra income from working with my dad. Yeah, um, sure. Obviously, like the contents have slowed down, so it's not like a direct, like, oh, this is just all extra cash. There's obviously some subsidizing, but just having the extra, the extra, uh, extra money because we last year we did so much traveling for my daughter's volleyball it's like and the ticket uh, uh plane tickets were so expensive yeah. last year we, we cut down two trips instead of all four of us going i went to philadelphia my wife went to chicago and that's how we split it that Jeez. way and it was still like two grand <clears throat> for two people when normally we fly the four of us for two grand it was like oh so we're still kind of like paying off paying off some of that shit on mm. the credit cards that we put on so yeah know. it's it's not this year um Christmas, uh, my, my son's getting to that age where like, you know, stuff's becoming more expensive now mm -hmm. and it's just going to get worse as he gets older. So, you know, the, I mean, my wife and I, we've kind of scaled back, but it's nice because I, I'm able to like any, like throughout the year, I, I really, the only thing I take off work for maybe a camping trip for like, you know, Maybe one or two camping trips a year, right? So that, that's like a week. That's like a long weekend. It's nothing crazy. Maybe I need one extra day, right? Right. Um. And GCX. So like, I usually have PTO sitting in my bank that that it just sits there. Yep. So I sell it back. So it's kind of nice at the end of the year. I get my PTO sell back my my buyback. Oh, that's cool. They let you do that. That's cool. Yeah. So then, Christmas money. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Christmas money. Yep. So and that's what that goes right to. So Hell it, yeah. it's, yeah, it's kind of like t the only downside is it's late that it comes. So it'll come like early to mid December. It doesn't okay. leave you a whole lot of time to like bang shit out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like my, my son's gifts, we usually get throughout the year. We'll just like, you know, as he says, he likes things. We just kind of grab it smart and smart. just stash it. You know what I mean? Yep. Throughout the year. And then when December comes, it's like, oh shit, it's, gonna, it's a big Christmas. Yep. Um, but like what I get my wife and stuff like that, I, generally it comes like late December. Yep. I end up getting it if, you know what I mean? Like last yeah, year she had a whole, whole brand. She wanted a new snowboarding setup. <clears throat> oh, nice. Yeah. She hasn't boarded in a while and she's got like an older ride set up right now. And I'm like, ride, <laughs> ride. <laughs> Um, so she wanted a whole new setup. So I went out and I got her brand new bindings and boots and the board that I wanted to get her, which was awesome, awesome deck. It was a, a Burton deck and I went to go get it and it sold out in her. Size. Oh man. And I'm like, damn, I should not have waited. I just should have pulled the trigger on it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And it was becoming late in the season and all that to be said, I bought her the snowboarding setup and she was pregnant. Like, <laughs> I mean, when I bought it, we didn't know, but yeah, she was pregnant. She, I mean, like she couldn't have used it anyways, right? So uh, this year, she found a, a deck that she liked. We ran out. I was like, "We're going, we're going tomorrow. We're going tomorrow to get it." Like I'm not, I'm not waiting on this. We right. went out. We picked up her deck. I'm like, "All right, well, Merry Christmas for last year. <laughs> now you have something else this year." <laughs> yeah, I mean, shit, my my, my kids, uh, Sierra just turned eighteen, and uh, and Bryce is fifteen. So, I mean, they don't do toys. They don't, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's that age where clothes are actually cool. Like they, they're down with clothes and, uh, you know, a couple electronics here and there. Like mm -hmm. I know Bryce wants a PlayStation five, uh, even though he's got a dual piece, he's got my dual old PCs, but his friends still play on PlayStation and not everything's on, uh, you know, cross play yet. Yep. <clears throat> so he still plays his PlayStation all the time. And, uh, uh, but he is going to be driving, you know, come early next year. See, that's the other uh, thing. So, yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's think of some things. Maybe think of some things. Like last year was easy for my daughter because she had, she had been driving, so we bought her some stuff for her car and, and everything like that. So that was easy. Like we got him stuff today for Christmas or for, for, his, for a car for Christmas. Then it'd be like, wait, well, got like four months, five months until he can actually use it. Right. And even now, he like technically should have got his driver's permit a month ago, and he hasn't gotten it yet. And here in Arizona, you have to. Be, it has to be six months with the learner's permit before you can get your license. Oh, so the longer okay. he waits, the longer he can get. It's going to take He's him to get his license. Pushing it back. 
Yeah, I'm like, bro, you should get on that. Like, even if you don't want to drive, just take the test, get your permit, and then the clock starts for yep. your license. Is it still and, the um, just the like the kiosk test? Yeah, it's, oh yeah, do it online now. You don't have to do it. You don't even have to go in, into the thing, dude. We yep. had to go into that fucking dusty ass Same. DMV, man. Sit yep. in those fucking cubicles like it was like. <laughs> Like you're voting, <laughs> dude. Like it was deciding your life role. What the fuck is that book? Uh, oh, what the fuck? The Giver. It's like you're sitting there in this like fucking cubicle deciding what you're going to be for the rest of your life. It's your right. stupid permit test, a book that was actually a pamphlet. You had yep. a, what light <laughs> indicates stop? Yep, exactly. Oh, yeah. Man. So I told him. I said, I said, dude, I know. I get it, man. If you're not in a hurry to drive, that's fine. But you just just know you're pushing. You're inevitable out, and so you should probably just take the test and. It's not that hard, man. You studied it. You looked at it. You know, it's easy. Dude, Just I, do it. I had such a shitty go when I, I had to wait a year and a half before I could get my license. Really? Yeah, dude. I had my permit and I got into this fuck crazy snowboarding accident. Ooh. Um, anyone's familiar with the East Coast knows that we have better edge control than all you motherfuckers on the West. That being said, we have the shittiest conditions. We just straight ride on ice, whereas they have that sweet pow pow. Right. We, it's like slut, like it was like late season, man. It was slushy during the day. So the riding conditions were just slow and just shitty. And then as it transitioned into night, sheet of ice, man, it just froze over. So I'm bombing down this mountain and the, there, there must have been some somebody snow plowing as they were going down, and it created this this frozen ripple. Dude, when I came down, I went to stop. I fucking hit this ripple. I hopped, and then my front edge came down before my rear edge. Dude, my face went <laughs> smack the ice. <gasps> my buddies were watching me. They were like, "Dude, you full on like it was like a scorpion. Your back bent backwards." And the board came over the back of my head and I sprung up. But I, that whole time, I smacked my face onto the hard pack and oh. I was just like freaking grinding my face on the oh. ice going down the mountain. And so, like, I ripped the whole left side of my lip, was all ripped. I ripped oh. the left side of my eyelid. The whole, I had just gnarly, just all the skin on the left side of my face was ripped off from the, because it was just granular ice. It was like sandpaper, yep. right? Yep. And I was, I was out cold. I woke up in the hospital. I was, I was oh, out. Shit. They thought I fractured the whole left side of my skull. They thought my orbital bone was just demolished. My eye was swollen shut for a week. All that to be said, it was like crazy damage and all. Like it, I didn't go to school for over a month. I had constant ble like uh, bleeding in my head on my brain mm -hmm. that was just slowly draining. So I couldn't. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't do anything. I was out. But they were afraid because of the concussion and the the head trauma that I was going to have issues driving. Right. Right. The neurological damage and all that. So they were like, yeah, you medically are not allowed to drive for a year <laughs> to make sure that you don't like fall asleep, like, pass out in the middle. You know what I mean? Which is fucking right. fair. That's fair. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's fair. And I, I, I was... I was patient motherfucker about it. I, I get it. I, I totally get it. But yeah, I had to wait an uh, additional year beyond just to get my license. Damn. I, mine man. was, uh, mine, I was, I was a, a, a year late as well, but mine was because of grades. Like first it was. Wait, so it was uh, a parental dictation then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because okay, so first fair. it was like they weren't going to give me my permit because my grades were shitty. But then I had an opportunity to go to this like driving, um, thing like in a parking lot like you drive cars like defensive driving like thing right oh yeah, but you yeah. had to have your permit you had to yeah, have your yeah. permit though so my parents were like all right look we know you want to go to this and it's good that you do go to this so we'll get we have to get your permit so let's get your permit so i got my permit and even that i was like already i i think it was already 16 or really close to being 16 so i should have already gotten me getting my license but i'm just not getting my permit and um and then yeah i, I guess just i wasn't in that big of a hurry either to mm. to drive uh, and then I started dating my wife and I would literally would ride my bike two miles and to her house. all of a sudden house. it mattered. Yeah, yeah. I'm riding my bike two miles to her house to go hang out with her. And it's like, <laughs> this fucking sucks. I got a job. This I got money. Cool. Yep. So I was like, all right, mom, dad, like, 
what do I need to do to get my license? And at that point, my grades were better. And so it was just like, oh, let's go do the driving school. Let's go, do, you know, take the test. I got my license. And then I remember my, my dad, I found out later he bought it, but he said that he, um, is that my aunt gave it, gave me the car, but apparently he bought it for like 500 bucks. And, uh, it was nice. like, you know, old jalopy fucking, uh, what was it? it Chrysler. Dude, if you don't Corsica. start off in an old shit box, man, you're setting yep. at a disadvantage. I had a 94 yep. Nissan hard body stick shift. Uh, that, dude, yeah, a this little is a stick mini shift truck, too. dude. Yeah. Yep. Chevy Corsica awesome, with no dude. fucking suspension. This fucking yeah. bitch is like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and, uh, so I roll, I remember, I remember, um, calling my, my, uh, my girlfriend and I, my, my wife and I said, Hey, I got a new car. I'm going to, I'm going to roll up to your work. She was a bagger at grocery store. And I roll up and she was like, do you mean that whole like <laughs> that? I don't, not, not, I don't know who that is. That's not my boyfriend. And I pull up and she thought, oh, she guy. was thinking all like new car, like, oh, cool. And she sees this fucking thing. She's like, what the fuck is that? And so, uh, yeah, I started, that's that my first car before the, and around that time I was still driving my dad's old beater Chevy that just, you know, roll the window down. Cause there's no AC. Get you and A to got B, three, man. three inch, three inch pipes. It's just like, Whoa, get you going A down to the B. fucking, yeah. yeah. It's like my so buddy driving an old square body Ranger. Yeah. Square that's, body that's, S10s. That's what you started with, man. Yeah. It's an everybody. I mean, if you didn't have that, you had the Cutlass Supreme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. That's all anybody drove. Well, it depends on the high school. If you went to the one high school, that's all anybody drove. If you went to the other high school, yeah, it was Beamers and Benzes yep. and Vets. And, but we I got a good mix here. I didn't go to that school, so. Yeah. We got a good mix. We got like half, I would say, I don't want to say half and half, but like you, you know, we got the kids that are like, yeah, parents buy them brand new cars. Here you go. Or here's my hand-me-down Beamer, right? I'm going to go buy a new one. Here's your hand-me-down. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the other ones that drive like the beat up, put together like trucks. They go, they're, yeah. out, they're out there in their driveway working on their own trucks yep. and making their own trucks. They come drive it in with the big, you know, roll cages and, and you know, uh, uh, a lot of trucks, obviously. We're out, where we live out near the mountains. Yeah. <clears throat> We, I mean, trucks. granted, smaller, but yeah, all, all trucks. A, a couple kids maybe had like standard cab F one fifties, but they were beat to shit. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like most of us had like the Rangers, or the S tens, like small, small body pickups. Um, and then as you just start trading and you know, get into the Honda scene, and you start working on a shitbox Honda, and then yep, you graduate up to. I graduated up to the Volkswagens. That's where I mean, I was part of that, and then. Most of the guys went from V dubs to uh, Subies, jumped up to the Subarus, and then eh, here we are now. I'm working on a Beamer. I never was a I never big big car guy. My dad has a, a '68 Plymouth Roadrunner. Um, nice. Still ha- still owns it today. And I drove that a little bit. And I, I I was getting close to graduating high school, and I told my dad within a week I was like, oh yeah, you know I I really want a computer, Dad. I really want to get a PC, and and you know I really like working on computers and stuff. And uh, and then like in the same week, I was like, "Hey, so and so is selling their their Cutlass. What was it? A five five four or five four two? Or I forget what it was called, but it was it was a three. It's three numbers. So whatever mm-hmm. that muscle car is, he's you know it's it's like uh, twenty five hundred dollars. And uh, my dad goes, "I right, tell you what, I'll buy you either the car or the computer for your graduation present. So you get to pick which one you want. I don't it doesn't matter to me. I know one's more expensive than the other, but I will I'll buy that." And at first I was like, oh, the car, duh, right? The car's been great. But then I, me and my buddy started talking. I was like, man, you could do a lot more with the computer. You could you know, use it at home. I could play games. I could do this, I could do that. And so I opted for the PC. Mm. And it, I, I always talk about that, how like, maybe that's why I'm here where I'm at. You I know, mean, if I would have gone. I mean, arguably, yeah, you probably. I went, to a, I went to a computer college, got a degree, like, you know. Let's be real but, though. If you're not a car guy, you would have just sold the car. Yeah, well, I mean, I would have drove it as a car. I wouldn't have like, exactly. worked on but, it. I wouldn't have done anything cool you, you to it. You wouldn't have kept it either. I mean, you probably would have sold it and traded up. Right. Or da- like, whatever. Whatever the case may be, whatever your needs would have turned into, you probably would have gotten rid of it. Versus what set you on your on your path was probably that PC. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, you, you could make that argument all day long. To, I to have day, way too many hobbies, dude. <laughs> I have well, way to this too day, many hobbies. My favorite summer, it's a toss up between the, my first summer moved out of my parents' house and this first summer graduating high school. And I, I was only, I was, it was only like six weeks before graduating and starting college. So that, that summer though, when I graduated high school, I played, I, I would go to work from like four to like 10, four to 11. And then I would go to my girlfriend's house, hang out with her until she fell asleep. And then I'd come home and I'd play Starcraft Hell online. Yeah. 
till my dad's alarm clock went off at five in the morning and then I'd go to bed. And that was my summer before I started college. Hell yeah. Just Dude, playing, I, I, playing games till <laughs> middle of the night. I've always been, always been about speed. Fucking, I, I, whether it's like a snowboard going fast or my fucking street bike or whatever. Dude, that, that's where, that's my lane. That's where I'm at. And all my buddies in high school, same deal. They were all, which crazy is, and thank God, knock on wood, my, my buddies, we all made it, right? We, we all made it. We're okay. We're all still here. My, clo- my, my closest buddies. Right. The amount of accidents, fatal accidents that happened in high school. Um, dude, it was always these poor kids that had these crazy expensive cars. Yeah, like like the poor like the poor kids coming into high school with the fucking M threes, right? With the with the crazy setups, those it's like man, they didn't even stand a chance, dude. Didn't even stand a chance. Now in high school, we the two wheels was a dirt bike, right? I didn't have a street bike mm-hmm. in high school. It was a dirt bike, so we were doing dumb shit in the fields, which yep. is right there with you. No, that was right? me. <laughs> I mean, that's about as safe as you're gonna get. And it was until after that I got the street bike. And again, thank God, because I'm fucking dumbass. <laughs> dumbass. And I've ridden East Coast. I, I brought that thing out to Texas. I was ripping up and down Texas. And, and on Texas roads, I had a, I had a, a Ninja ZX6R. It was a, a o, Ooh, 08, yeah. 08 636. And around me, where I'm at right now, it, like the rural roads and shit, they're twisties, they're hills. Oh, my God, are they fun. They're so fun. Texas is a lot of straightaways, man. If you don't have a leader bike, you don't, it, it, it's don't, don't ride them. It's, you don't realize how fast you're going. Well, it's I, I, dude. I, I would have that thing pinned wide open on a 600 wide open. And there's still like cars passing me and shit. You need a leader bike. You need, you need, Holy a, shit. dude, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Um, out here it's awesome and ultimately the reason I got rid of my street bike is because the roads started getting more and more crowded and I would have favorite sections of roads right I'd be coming up I'd be like yes I get to like really like lay this thing down I get to turn into it man I'd be coming down ripping tits coming into a turn which is my own irresponsibility but coming into a turn and soccer mom sitting there on her phone drifting into my lane fuck it you know what I mean always Always, there is a minivan or something, either half in my lane, half in theirs, or 10 miles an hour plus under the speed limit, and I'm stuck. And now I'm on a street bike, and I'm putzing around, which is not what right. you want to do on a street bike. And it's just right. like, it was so defeating. I'm like, why am I on this? Why am I on this? I, I, this should be, a, like, I should, if I'm going to be on this, it would be comfortable. So I traded it up. I got, a, I got a Harley. And I love my Harley, but it is not the same. That's my street bike. Yep. I feel that. I still beat the shit out of it, though. <laughs> I put new pipes on it, and I think within the first week of the new pipes, I bent the shit out of the, uh, out of the rear end of it because I took a turn too, too tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to just leaning like way, yeah. into, way into a turn, right? Right. And man, my, my bike would just kick up like that real wheel. <laughs> my, my footboards would hit because I'm coming around. You're doing like... Brrr whatever whatever the turns rated at you can't take yeah. it that fast on a harley dude my fucking footboards will hit and if you're not careful if you hit too hard it yep. kicks that back wheel up and you'll catch it's gonna factor. shit out of you dude pucker <laughs> factor but i scraped the shit out of these brand new pipes less than a week because i took a turn uh, too shit. fast too hard damn dude it's fun well, right on man I, I i'm glad we got the chance to catch up uh, as the as we get closer to the end of the year, time should come back to me, and we should be able to get more more uh, solid hey, times with Kevin and you. Yes, we need to make a plan. Have you experienced DMZ yet? No, no. I, I played some Warzone. I played a shit ton of multiplayer. Uh, I'm really enjoying the grind, but yeah, I have not played DMZ yet. So my, my all my experience is multiplayer. You and I and Kevin, we need we need to DMZ it. Down, dude. We need yeah. DMZ. We, we need to get a time where we go in and, and we play whenever it is. But before we do the next episode, like the three of us, we have to get that in. 
Okay. Yeah. I, right. I mean, it's only a two hour time difference now between, between us, uh, with, with the time change. So yeah. it's not too bad. And evenings, your evenings are like my like late afternoons. That'll totally be work out. Perfect. perfect. So we, we can coordinate with, uh, with Kevin and pick a time in the next couple of weeks before the holidays. All right, All right. Well, uh, sorry for the short episode today, everybody. It, it's Sunday. Uh, the birds are about to be 11 and one, 11 and one, 12 and one. Are we? Whatever. Birds, birds are about to put another win in in the books. I'm going to go watch and celebrate as the obnoxious Philly fan I am.